So is heaven real and what exists beyond this life? Randy Kay shares his powerful story of dying, experiencing the other side, and the revelations he discovered meeting Jesus face to face. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. In a single moment, everything can change. The closing of one chapter, the beginning of something new, where miracles become reality and we get a glimpse of what lies beyond, the place where heaven meets earth. Well, have you ever wondered what heaven is really like or maybe you're not sure if it's a real place? Well, today with the help of our special guest, you'll hear a firsthand account of what he experienced after death and the revelations he discovered on the other side. But first joining me around the table is April Simons. Are you ready for another I good testimony? so ready. This is going to be so good. I can't wait. Anna Kendall, do you have some people in heaven? You know, the older we get, the more people we have in heaven. It's true. <laughs> it I mean, is. It, right? Like it friends is. and family. Ab absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. it just makes you want to get there even sooner. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. so. It has a call on your life. Cindy Johnson, how are you? I'm doing great. You got a mama up in heaven? I sure do. You get to see her again. And my grandparents and heaven is so much sweeter. Mm -hmm. We're going to see them again. That's right. That's right. Are you ready, Kendra Kelly Dean? I just want to see Jesus. <laughs> I, you know, I just can't. Well, our guest today, I guess, who, wait. guess who we got to see? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> this is such an amazing story. I yeah. can't wait to hear it. But yeah. it's going to be a great show. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good. Are you ready to... See some of the loved ones from heaven one day. I am day. so ready. And the more you're we hear girls. about the revelations yeah. of heaven, mm -hmm. the more exciting it is mm -hmm. that we're <laughs> It really is. It really is. There. Well, you know, he once served as CEO for a biotech company and a media company and has been an executive for various Fortune 100 companies. Then after a life-changing experience, he answered the call to ministry. And he's here to tell us more about that. Please welcome Randy Kay. So now you've got the real job. <laughs> now I mean, you've got the real job, today. which is being in ministry. Yes. Which like tops all those others, right? It does. It does. I never thought that I would be called Pastor Randy. <laughs> but, uh, that's my new name. I love that. I love that. Well, for Randy, dealing with a health issue was nothing new. He dealt with things like that before, but there was something different about the day he noticed his leg was swollen. In fact, even the season felt different, but he had no idea what was about to happen. You had kind of been on a search, if you will, and I, I, when I was reading uh, uh, your biography, what was interesting to me was how that you had actually dissected every religion, trying to oh, discredit yes. it, including Christianity. Yes. So tell us what you found in that and trying to cognitively <laughs> figure out God. There are so many of you out there that try to cognitively <laughs> figure out God. I, I was kind of like the uh, Saul before he became Paul. You know, yeah. I was very anti-Christian. I was anti-religion as a whole. So yeah. at Northwestern University, I got together with a group of people. We were all either atheists or agnostics. Our objective in this research project was to disprove all of the religions in the world. Wow. Mm. Um, so that was a heavy duty project. Right. It was yeah. part of a uh, yeah. thesis mm -hmm. that we were doing uh, at Northwestern. And so we had programmed all of the religions and, and we invalidated uh, uh, all of the religions by virtue of either they were a fusion of beliefs or they were the, uh, created by a, a flawed founder of that religion with the exception of one. And that was the, uh, the God of the Bible. We found that given that there were 66 books of the Bible, they were written at different times mm -hmm. uh, during the course of uh, a long period of history. But what really struck us profoundly was that the accuracy of the prophecy spoken in the Bible was a thousand percent. That blew our mind. Oh, wow. yeah. That blew wow. our minds awesome. yeah. because all of the other religions that we correlated had an accuracy of less than 10%. Wow. Mm -hmm. But even after you saw that with the Bible, I want to say, did you get on your knees and say, God, I know that you're real? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was hard on 
hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just was very hard-headed. Did but it I did. anger you that you couldn't prove that? Was it frustrating? Well, it's interesting you asked that because it did, because I went into this thinking, okay, well, this is it. We'll publish a paper. We'll say that all of the religions were we'll manufactured by, by man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's done, right. Um, well, what I did do is I cried out the window of where I was living at the time, saying uh, to an unknown God, I said, if you are real, I need to know you more than pages in a book. Mm -hmm. Wow. And just reveal yourself. I got an, I've got to know you as a person. Intellectually, I mm -hmm. knew that the answer could not come through that means yeah. Mm -hmm. that it had to become in a personal way. Yeah. Uh, I knew enough, having studied the Bible now, that, uh, that God presented him in a very personal way through Jesus and the Holy yeah. Spirit. And so I wanted that personal encounter, not in a necessarily earnest way, but in an intellectual way, because mm -hmm. that's how I lived most of my life. Okay, so let's jump forward now to that fateful day that your calf began to swell. Mm -hmm. You went on a bike ride in San Diego and got even worse. It got, my calf actually swelled to about one and a half times its size. And while I was bicycling, I'd normally along the coast, we lived in San Diego, it would be an easy uh, bike ride, but I could barely breathe. Uh, I was huffing and puffing. It seemed like I was on an incline uh, climbing up of a, a mountain. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted an anti-inflammatory. I'd been in the healthcare uh, field. And so I went into uh, get the anti-inflammatory from an orthopedic surgeon, of all things. Mm -hmm. And then I collapsed in his office and I was rushed to the ER. Oh and what did they find out? They found six blood clots. So third leading cause of death. And uh, I had six of these and then I couldn't breathe. And so I had to be ventilated. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had... There was a patient next to me who had a drug-resistant bacterial strain, mm. and so I'd contracted this. Oh. They'd rushed him out oh, of the hospital, wow. or out of the room, I should say, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, my heart was struggling to pump blood, but there was no blood to be pumped. Mm. So I went into arrhythmia, cardiac arrest, distress, wow. and uh, shortly thereafter, my, uh, my heart stopped. Mm -hmm. And so approximately how long were you dead? I was dead for 30 minutes and 56 wow. seconds wow. because I was hooked up to a monitor at the time. So it wasn't apart from the hospital. All of this was documented by the hospital. Wow. And there was a breach of protocol in the hospital because somebody had walked away at the time. They thought my, the electrodes had been removed from the monitor accidentally because you know, patients can move and dislodge their electrodes. And when it, when it actually a couple had discovered me when they came to, to visit with me that uh, my, oh my, my face was ashen oh and it was uh, oh turned uh, gray. Oh and, uh, and that's how it was discovered. Okay, oh so goodness. let's jump into what happened 30. during this 30 minutes. The, I guess the first thing you experienced, which I thought was very interesting, is a need to call on Jesus. Yes. Like, where did that come from? You know, I was in this surreal, uh, very ethereal place where um, that I could not understand. And I could see warring, what I came to know uh, after the fact were warring angels. These were otherworldly looking figures. There was really a battle going on for your soul. It was a battle right. over my soul. And I knew enough, of course. Uh, you read the Bible. I read the Bible. Uh, that if we, if we, uh, if we uh, declare the Jesus as our Lord and yes. Savior, and I declared, I cry out the name of Jesus Christ. I would be declaring long about this. Yes. Yes. I would be declaring. I, I, you know, and, and it wasn't save me. It was just, I just cried out the name, uh, the name of Jesus and, and he knew my heart because it was mm -hmm. instantly that I was cheek to cheek mm -hmm. with, uh, mm -hmm. with Jesus. Wow. Okay, well, wow. let's go back to right yeah. before your cheek to cheek with Jesus <laughs> and tell everybody what you saw with these two entities. Yeah, what yes. did they look like? Oh, you know, um, you're going to think I'm, I'm writing a fiction novel if I tell you exactly what they look like because part of it is, is we want to hear exactly yeah. indescribable. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> so. So they were tall, about, I would say, maybe looked about seven feet tall or whatever. They were gargantuan, maybe seven, ten feet tall. 
and their faces were otherworldly. They weren't, uh, they seemed to morph in different uh, faces, you know, on either side. Mm. Um, and what struck me was that on the right side, and they were battling with what looked like swords, and again, there are no words really to adequately describe it. Yeah. And it looked like the ones on the right side were dressed in a kind of armor. Hmm. Uh, and the light that was pulling me, pulling me up, uh, drawing me upward, hmm. was shining on the, on the figures to the right. And then I looked to the figures on the left who were also battling in like manner with the ones on the right. However, they were uh, gaunt. They looked more like something you would see maybe from a horror picture mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. They were worn and decrepit looking. Mm -hmm. Were they also large in stature? They were large in stature and they had the same type of physique, but the the ones on the right were, were uh, brilliant. The light was shining the against light. this armor mm -hmm. and they were just uh, almost heroic looking. They mm -hmm. were just, you know, strong and yes. and the ones on the left look emaciated they looked mm -hmm. almost sickly but also very strong and they were warring against mm -hmm. each other yeah. so so wow. i guess in retrospect now you know that one was the heavenly host mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the other was fallen angels yes but they were both created angelic beings yes Absolutely. And Were you I, glad you got pulled towards the light? <laughs> yes. It's kind of a, a no-brainer when you look at it. Here, here's the angels, the one on there. I want to be with that group. I don't want to be with the, the ones that look like something out of a horror picture. Well, and this yeah. just proves that when, you, when the Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord yeah. shall be yeah. saved, yeah. and you just cried out Jesus. Mm -hmm. I cried out the name of Jesus Christ, and there was an earnestness mm. yes. to that cry. Um, at that time, I had sought the truth, and the truth really had found me. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't realize that because I thought I would have to discover the truth. Well, you did ask for an encounter. Yeah, that's what I, was I did. I did. <laughs> yes. And be careful what you pray for. Because did you actually realize you were dead? That you were gone? I I realized I had no lack of consciousness. That is, I. I, I didn't have a, a space and time mm -hmm. that I was aware of where I was no longer existent. Wow. Um, but I was aware in this space that something was going on apart from the normal day to day. Yeah. This was otherworldly. And I was kind of going with the flow at this point. But even, even though I was looking at something that was unknown or unfamiliar to me, I still had this comfort. I still had this peace because this light was like a warm blanket, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, just yeah. cascading and enveloping me. Yeah. And I felt that, and it wasn't until later that I realized the origin mm -hmm. of that of yes. that light. Wow. That Jesus is the light. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what was the next experience you had after that? So I cried out the name of Jesus Christ and I was cheek to cheek with him. Mm -hmm. And his bristles were very soft. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he leaned into me and he wrapped his left arm against, around my left shoulder. Mm. And I caved to the floor. Mm. And I was shouting every superlative I could think of. Because mm. I knew that this was Jesus Christ, the one that I had studied, the one I knew about. And I, and I was crying out all of these, mm. Lord of Lords, King of you, everything I could think of. Yes. To, to, to just shout out praises. And then he, as I was sobbing, he lifted me up by this mm. left shoulder, by my left shoulder, and he just and grabbed me and hugged me, and he turned me. And I looked into the eyes of love, mm. consummate love. And I had never um, been seen uh, with love as a person. You know, I knew the emotion of love. I, thank you. I come from a loving family. Mm -hmm. I knew what it was like to be loved. But this was different. Mm -hmm. this, this was the personification, the person of love. And the one I had been seeking for my whole life. And I realized that he had found me more than I had found him. Mm -hmm. And uh, his eyes were like the color of the ocean, you know, all colors because his 
the, the light that was emanating down, that was pulling me up, was coming from him mm. and illuminating all of heaven. And, I, and, I, and he tunneled, his, his eyes tunneled into every dark place within me. Wow. And, and it provided this comfort and this reassurance that I had never felt previously. Mm. And, and he was searching my heart. I realized he was searching my heart. And I was seeing these vignettes, and I was there in these vignettes of my life, throughout my life, one after another, and I was in these. And I was seeing the good with the bad, the times that I had failed God. And there were far too many of those. And what was, what was shocking to me is that instead of condemning me, mm -hmm. yeah, these like failures, mm -hmm. They only serve to reflect Jesus' grace in my life. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, looking at these, these different situations, vignettes, and thing, saying to Jesus, really? Mm -hmm. that? Even that? I, that was unforgivable, I thought. Even this? And I was going through it, just nodding with assurance. And I, uh, I realized that that those failures were not being shown to me, revealed to me, to condemn me, but to reflect the grace of Jesus in all things. So what happened from that point on? Because I know that he actually kind of took you on a tour into heaven. What did you see? What were some of the things you saw? Oh, he had, he had taken his arm and just he had turned me away. We were face to face, and he turned me toward this paradise. And I was looking at the grandeur grandeur of heaven and I was seeing the rolling hills there were no clouds and I was seeing uh, animals of all kinds and a softer nature uh, for the predators and I was seeing <laughs> and I was seeing vineyards mm. and I was seeing fruits and plants of all kind wow. and each all throughout the flora and every living thing was giving life was mm. was sprouting forth new life. And everything, I realized, was living and nothing was dying. So everything I was realizing was intentionally being, uh, exhibiting the presence of the Lord. Everything I saw, everything I felt. So the colors, for example, that I saw, shades of, of greens that were the multiplication of t 100 times greater or so of the shades of green I had seen in this world. And that was the same for every different color. Wow. But the thing of it was that these colors and the, the life of the, the flora and everything that I was seeing, the brilliancy of what was around me and living, was that they were not just speaking forth the beauty of, in and of themselves, they were speaking forth of the beauty of Jesus. And I had thought of Jesus prior as a, as, a, as a condemning God, mm. one who was angry with me. Mm. And I realized that what I was seeing was the presence of God fully permeating everything, every facet of what I was wow. looking at. And so I could see with a different vantage point. I could see as Paul talked about, which was the Christ mindset. Mm. And that was, I was thinking as though looking not as Jesus, but looking through the eyes of Jesus. And everything I saw took on a new meaning. We, we asked, did you recognize anyone in heaven? And you did recognize someone. Yes, I did. I was close to my grandmother growing up. And how old was she when she passed? And oh my goodness, I think she was probably in her 80s. Okay. And so she had, uh, she had emerged from what looked like a, like a Monet painting. I can't describe it. Oh, it was surreal. Uh -huh. It was yeah. uh, very faded. It was faint, but it was, it was coming to life. It was almost as though that, that landscape where she was coming from was being birthed into uh, wow. clarity <laughs> as she was walking through it. And all of a sudden, she was in the space where I was in a very uh, clear yeah. place with Jesus always by my side. Mm -hmm. And she cupped her, her uh, heart of her heart with her hand. And she mouthed, I love you. Aww. And what did she look like? She, um, she was young. 
<laughs> but I knew it was her. I knew, I knew because what I was seeing in heaven, I could see people in the way that they truly were. I was, wasn't looking at appearances. Yeah. So I, could, I knew her innately. But Not, you said it reminded you of pictures that you had seen of her when she was young. And that was after the fact. Yeah. When I okay. went back and I looked at pictures I'd never seen her oh, when she was young. Really? And I thought, well, that, that was who I saw. Mm, yeah. And what was interesting is that I had this very distinct fragrance that just was enveloping me was the, the smell of chocolate cookies <laughs> baking <laughs> in the oh, oven. Wow. And, oh, and she, when I was a child, <laughs> she would, she would those bake cookies. those oh, chocolate wow. cookies. That's yeah, how I knew pudding. her. The chocolate cookies that she would bake in the oven yeah. wow. for me. And I was smelling that around wow. me. Oh, and it goodness. was just, everything was just speaking God's love. It was like, Lord, really, you are just yeah. pulling on all the stops for me, aren't wow. you? Wow. You're, wow. You're, that was something you wrote in your book I thought was so neat was that you said being with Jesus felt like it was just an audience for one. Oh. That even though heaven is so full, he has such a deep relationship with us yes. that you felt like you were really the one that mattered in that moment. It was so intimate. When he looked at me, I felt like I was truly an audience of one, mm. that his full devotion was on me. And I know for any of us at any given time, you know, when we're thinking or looking at somebody we're thinking about maybe, you know, it's called scattered thinking. We're thinking about, you know, 10 things or whatever other, you know, I'd right. have to go to the grocery store very, or whatever it is. <laughs> very present with you. He was very present in mm. a very exclusive way. Wow. So I felt like I was the only one that mattered. I knew, implicitly knew, that the cares of the world were on his sh proverbial shoulders. But I felt like I was the only one that mattered. And I knew the same applied to every single person. You mentioned, and I thought it was so powerful, that when in that audience of one in that time, that the Father spoke to you and said, you've got to forgive or you've got to quit judging yeah, yourself. That's uh, good. So you will stop judging others. Yes. And he was preparing you for when you came back. He yes. knew he was sending you back. Yes. You know, I had... Um, I judged myself from the time I was in heaven even when I was looking at these vignettes and my failures. And then he turned to me and he said, um, when you stop judging yourself, you'll stop judging other people. Mm -hmm. wow. And I had realized, you know, my, my daughter, you know, she had been our proverbial wild child and, you know, um, she's a beautiful young lady today. But I'd realized I'd been judging Everyone. Mm. And, and I didn't even know that, how much I judged. Mm. But I didn't even realize I was judging myself. It wasn't like I was nasty to people. It wasn't like that. It was just like I had a high standard. Sure. Yeah. You know, and I had a high standard for myself. You know, I'd graduated top of the class. I'd done all those things and, and achieved, you know, the, the high level within the corporate world and such. And Jesus showed me through that he said, when you stop judging yourself, and it was just a relief. Mm -hmm. It was just a, it was just awesome. a pressure that was released Lifted from, from your me. shoulders. Yeah. Tell it us was. about coming back, because I'm sure you <laughs> wanted to stay, but oh. how did that journey transform your faith in your life today? Oh. Well, you know, just before I came back, um, he told me he was returning me for, a, because I hadn't fulfilled my purpose. Mm -hmm. And a butterfly rested on my shoulder. Ooh. And uh, it was, like everything else, it was vivid, chromatic, and velvety, and so much more beautiful than anything I'd seen in this world. And he said, moment by moment, I will reveal my purpose to you. Because if, you were, if I were to reveal it to you in full, you would not mm -hmm. remain dependent upon me. Yes. And I knew the purpose Ooh, of the butterfly yes. because they're very gentle creatures. Mm -hmm. If we move abrupt, abruptly, they just fly off. And I knew how to be still mm. and know that he's gone. But you didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave. No. Nobody wants to leave. <laughs> I, heaven is my home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heaven is my home. But you were gone I, 30 minutes. You should be brain dead. I should have been brain dead or damaged, certainly. Um, so that was a miracle in and of itself. But I remember going from this, the beautiful fragrances and smelling the first remembrance of where I was out of heaven was 
the acrid smell of the hospital, disinfectants, you know, yeah. and people around me. Well, that's that a bummer right there. And it was, it was awful. <laughs> yeah, was, oh, yeah. my God. Like you know, take me back. Take me yeah. back. And I'm just, and I was in this, and I was struggling again. And, and I was, and I just wanted so much to go back. And there was, there was a couple who, who had been in the room praying for me, but their prayer was ushered into a, a song. They were singing by my bedside. Mm. And there was a, a song being sung by the angels before I had left as the Lord was showing me the way and I could see the scars in his mm. hand. Mm. And, uh, and, I, and I realized at that point that before I had left heaven, I was hearing this beautiful choir of angels singing the same song of praise oh, as this wow. couple. Wow. Oh, wow. And I realized mm. that they were praying for me in this beautiful, uh, together as two people, ushering their prayers to heaven, and it was enjoined in heaven by the angels, mm. and of course the Lord interceding to oh, return me to earth. Or I, to love I love that. I love that. Well, what a powerful testimony. Yes. I, I tell you what, we've barely scratched the surface and there's so much more in Randy's book. But you know what? I hope that you feel encouraged today. Those of you that know the Lord, I pray that this has just caused you to have a joy and a hope and a knowing that beyond this life is something so, so, so amazing. I want you to remember that Jesus sees you. He loves you beyond anything that you could fathom. If you didn't get anything else from that story, I think that really stood out to me is how much Jesus loves each and every one of us. He wants you to give him your hurt, to let go of your judgments, especially those against yourself, just like we were talking about. And I want you to know today that his grace is sufficient for you. Well, if you're watching today and you need to let go of something or maybe you need to forgive yourself and ask the Lord to heal those places in your heart or maybe you're not even ready to meet the Lord and you'd like for someone to pray with you. Well, we have prayer partners that are standing by that know how to pray that salvation prayer. But you know, it's really just as simple as saying Jesus. I mean, just like we said. Mm -hmm. I mean, just calling on the name of the Lord and saying, Jesus, I need you. Help me, forgive me, and boom, it's done. Just like that. I mean, it is pretty amazing mm -hmm. how amazing and yet uh, simple and yet profound the Word of God is and His promises to us. Of course, you can go to daystar.com and click on prayer. Um, send your prayer request in that way. We pray over all the prayer requests that come into Daystar. But I do want to thank Randy for sharing his story with us here at the table. Again, be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Revelations from Heaven, a true account, and there's going to be so much more in here. I know I could tell everybody he's at the tables. <laughs> and uh, the afterlife, the 31 supernatural discoveries, it's available now. And for more on his ministry, you can visit him online at Randy K. Dot org. Also, remember to join the conversation after the program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing how Table Talk has touched your life. Thank you so much for watching. I pray you've been encouraged today. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, ladies. I'll tell you what, heaven is going to be an amazing place. And just like we have these uh, wonderful friends around the table, friends and family, those that know the Lord, that have gone on to be with the Lord, you are going to see them again. And eternity yes. is a long, long time. So <laughs> make sure your heart is right. Make sure you've forgiven. And make sure, just like you know, we talked about, forgive yourself. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.